Okay, hello everyone uh, from the beautiful campus of Tel Aviv University. Uh, my name is Milet Shamir and I am the incoming Vice President uh, for International Affairs here at Tel Aviv. Um, and I'm really delighted to welcome you uh, on behalf of the university to our information session tonight. Uh, I'm accompanied here by several colleagues. On my left, uh, you can see Professor Bruce Maddy Weitzman, who is head of our liberal arts uh, BA degree program. Uh, further left, we have Dr. Gary Sussman, who is our liaison in India. And to my right are two friends and colleagues from the School of Electrical, Electrical Engineering. Uh, Professor Mark Steif is the head of the School of Electrical Engineering, and Professor Udi Hyman is the head of the BSc program in Electrical Engineering. So we're all very happy to be here. And I will also mention that uh, we have uh, with us on Zoom uh, one of our Indian students uh, by the name of Ms. Shreya Shankar, and we are very happy to be having her with us today. Um, and I see also on Zoom, uh, Professor Yossi Shacham, also from Electrical Engineering. So we are a full and, uh, and uh, complete uh, team here, uh, ready to tell you a little bit about uh, our programs, about Tel Aviv University, and of course, to answer any questions that you may have. I'm also delighted to acknowledge the distinguished uh, presence of diplomats from uh, the Embassy of India here in Israel, as well as diplomats working in the Consulate General of Israel in Mumbai and in Israel's embassy in India. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate you giving us the time uh, to meet with us uh, tonight. Um, also, uh, it, I'm very pleased to underscore uh, our warm and special uh, partnership with several schools in India whose representatives are also joining us tonight. And let me just very quickly mention these schools. Uh, we have the Kalyani School, uh, DPS, Kaveri, Amity, Heritage, Mahindra, Pathways, Sri Ram, Indus, and Kiloskar. Um, welcome uh, everyone from these schools and of course a very warm uh, and happy welcome to uh, our perhaps future students at Tel Aviv University and uh, parents and, and families. Uh, as I mentioned, our goal is really to tell you a little bit about uh, the university and about two of its leading uh, international degrees, the BA degree in liberal arts and the BSc degree in electrical engineering. Um, and as I just mentioned, uh, you're uh, very much welcome to ask any questions you may have during our brief presentation. Uh, please uh, feel free to use the Q&A uh, function um, on your screen uh, at any time. And by the end of our presentations, we will turn to your uh, questions. But to start us off, uh, allow me to share with you uh, just a short uh, video clip about Tel Aviv University. I work in the physical optics lab at TAU uh, under Dr. Alon Bahabad. It is definitely the best lab at Tel Aviv University. Why? The simple answer is just look around at the equipment we have here. Towards the end of the second year, we were able to publish a paper uh, in a scientific journal, which is a very big deal for me because it's something very, very new and it was a great experience. The project was uh, titled uh, sub Fourier focusing of an optical beam. I work with Professor Aran Sokher. What uh, his group does is uh, we create RFICs, radio frequency integrated circuits, which are basically a Wi-Fi. Anything wireless that you do, we design it. Right now I'm working with Professor George Weiss. Uh, I'm working on a project uh, which is called Virtual Infinite Capacitor. I was looking for a lot of universities in India also and I got selected in a lot of universities. I was literally attracted to the university. I chose Tel Aviv University because I would have an opportunity to interact with different students from different nationalities, get a new level of international exposure, which would not have been that easy let's, if I was in, let's say, IIT or BITS. They have world-class facility here. Their labs are amazing. I compared the syllabus of IITs with syllabus of Tel Aviv University and the syllabus is almost the same, so I decided to come here 
and I think this is one of the best decisions I have ever taken. A lot of professors working in different areas that you can choose and that's what I wanted when I thought of uh, going for engineering. I was offered to start my masters and uh, my masters along with the bachelors, fourth year of my bachelors, so that I can get two degrees in five years, which is really great. I chose to be here because Tel Aviv University is best in research, in faculty, and it's amazing to study in the startup nation. As a woman, I did have concerns about my safety here in a new city. But I must say that Tel Aviv is a safe place. And, uh, but there is a worry about going out at night, going out alone. But the thing is, the university and the dorms are placed side by side and they are a very good locality. It's a very safe environment. There are a lot of parks around. And you, you do not feel the need to have to be worried about where you're going and at what time you're going because it's very safe around here. Tel Aviv University is the largest research university in Israel. And as you well know, Israel is called the startup nation, and Tel Aviv is the startup city. And Tel Aviv University is ranked number nine in the world for the fifth year in a row in the number of startups and the money raised by its alumni. I wish you all good luck and looking forward to see you in October. you just a little bit about uh, Tel Aviv University. Um, Sharon, if you could uh, open the, the PowerPoint, um, then I will uh, share with you that Tel Aviv University is Israel's largest and most uh, diverse institution of higher learning. Uh, it has over 30,000 students studying here in nine faculties. We can advance the, the slides a bit. No. Um, our uh, faculties range from engineering and science all the way to the humanities and the arts. Um, but within this very large university, there is a very special place uh, reserved for our international students. Tel Aviv University's leadership uh, puts as its top priority the globalization of our campus. And that is part of the reason... probably have some... Uh, technical difficulties, so just a minute. Yossi, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you well. Can you hear us well, and do you see the presentation? Yes, I see the presentation. Okay, so we're good. For some okay, minutes. great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, um, the leadership of Aviv University is emphasizing now the um, or prioritizing the globalization of the university. And that is why we're investing a lot of energy in our international programs and we're investing a lot of care in our international uh, students. Uh, I would say that two main motivations guide us in this effort. Uh, the first one is academic, academic excellence. If I were to put it bluntly, I would say we aim to create international programs that can compete academically with any Ivy League institution in the United States. The second motivation has to do with the well being of our international uh, students. Our students' uh, safety and health are a top priority here at Tel Aviv University. And we believe that you really cannot thrive academically without feeling uh, content and secure. And that is what we aim to provide all our, all our students from abroad. Um, if you were to, Sean, move back a little bit okay. with the slide, uh, even further back. Okay, so I will tell you that the university currently has over 60 international academic programs, and these programs host around 2,000 international students each year from the BA level all the way up to the postdoc level. The students come from all over the world. Uh, but again, I will share a, a little secret with you and tell you that Tel Aviv University has a special interest in recruiting students from India. Uh, it will perhaps not surprise many of you to, to hear that Indian students um, have an excellent track record here at our university, an excellent reputation as uh, hardworking and academically focused uh, students, and we would very much like to welcome more students from India in our midst. Uh, why are these international students uh, drawn to our university? Well, if you were able to see the video that I think a lot of you missed from before, you would know that 
certainly part of the attraction is the city of Tel Aviv itself. Uh, it's a very vibrant, dynamic city with beaches and restaurants and so on. And uh, students really have a wonderful time uh, living in the Tel Aviv area. But more importantly, I think students are drawn to our uh, academic quality as a top uh, research institution, to our diverse and, and dynamic uh, academic uh, offerings. Um, and also, and Sharon, if you skip one slide ahead, um, we uh, here at Tel Aviv University have very significant and deep uh, connections with the Israeli high-tech industry. And that is an incentive, I think, for many students, particularly for engineering students to come and study with us. And I'm sure my colleagues uh, will, will want to discuss this a little bit further um, down the line. Um, and so, again, if we skip ahead, uh, Sharon, one slide, I will just very briefly mention again that all academics and, uh, and, uh, and high-tech issues put aside for a moment, uh, we do invest special care in our international students, and it's important for us uh, to keep them safe and healthy. And that is why I want to mention here our student life team. Uh, who is here to welcome each and every international student to T Tel Aviv University and to make sure that his or her experience here is as smooth, as rewarding, and as exciting um, as possible. And it may be uh, um, important uh, at this juncture to say just a word about uh, the coronavirus uh, situation and its impact on life here uh, at Tel Aviv University. I'm happy to say that currently life on campus has more or less resumed its normalcy, um, of course, with various safety measures uh, in place. We are very hopeful at the moment that regular classes, regular life uh, will resume here in October when the school year uh, begins at Tel Aviv University. Uh, at the moment, uh, students who are currently Tel Aviv University students from abroad and who decided to leave during the crisis. A lot of our students decided to stay and we were happy uh, to host them uh, during uh, the height of the crisis. But those who did leave are allowed to uh, now come back uh, on campus and we're happy to welcome them back. Um, we're also hoping that in the next few weeks we would be able to admit uh, to Israel new students from abroad. Um, and of course we're keeping a very close watch on that situation as well. But we're hoping that in the course of the summer, we'd be allowed to bring all, all new students as well as old students from all over the world uh, to Israel. Um, but maybe what is most relevant for you to know is that university was committed uh, from day one of this crisis not to disrupt uh, the academic semester. Tel Aviv University was the first university in Israel to transform uh, immediately and to transition fully to online teaching and we are now uh, finishing uh, the spring semester successfully with no uh, damage done to academic life uh, here at the university. Um, should we find ourselves in a situation, and again, we are very much hoping that this will not be the case, but should we find ourselves in a situation where um, students would not be able to be here physically in October, we have set up a system where all students all over the world would be able to begin uh, their studies online, again, with minimal sacrifice uh, of the quality of learning and with no danger to the students' academic progress uh, in the program uh, in which they're enrolled. So I'm very much hoping, uh, as all of us uh, here are, uh, to see at least some of you here in Tel Aviv uh, in October. Um, I wish all of you, regardless of your plans, a lot of success and health and well-being. And I would now like to invite Professor Bruce Maddy Weitzman to tell you about our International Liberal Arts Program. Thank you, Professor Shamir. Good afternoon, everyone. Or good evening to you in India. Uh, as uh, Professor, Professor Shamir said, I'm the uh, head of the International BA in Liberal Arts Program. I myself am a professor of Middle Eastern history in the Department of Middle Eastern History at, at this university. Um, and I'm very uh, happy to talk with you a little bit about our program, the International BA in Liberal Arts. Uh, the concept liberal arts may not be fully familiar to you. Uh, it's really an, a, an American uh, concept. It really refers to just about everything to do with the study of, of the human condition. And uh, our program is designed uh, to do just that. 
uh, it's structured in a way that uh, combines uh, uh, a North American style uh, undergraduate degree with a European uh, Israel slash Israeli style degree, which means that uh, you one in our program one studies a number of subjects uh, and concentrates in a few of them. Um, it, the uh, uh, we are a, a three-year program. Uh, students uh, take 120 credits altogether to graduate. That means more than, uh, approximately 20 hours a week uh, of classes. Uh, we are completing our eighth year this year, this the international program. We currently have approximately 140 students in the program from all corners of the globe, really, uh, from countries in South America, from countries in East Asia, uh, in China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and India, for example, Australia as well. Uh, we, have, we have students from Sub-Saharan Africa, we have students from Europe, and of course we do have students uh, from North America, uh, from North America as well. Uh, we really do uh, take our mission seriously of educating for uh, humanity. Uh, as I don't have to tell you about the global crisis that we are all in and, and how it affects every aspect of life uh, as we know it, whether it's culture, economics, politics, psychology, interpersonal relations, uh, and all these things are connected in one way or another. And what we really do believe is that our students, uh, after spending three years here, understand more fully those connections in all areas and come out with the tools that they need to function in the world and to contribute uh, to society. Now, our program is, as the slide shows, is a track-based program. Uh, we offer eight tracks of studies. Uh, uh, in, in which the students do receive the broad knowledge in various disciplines. Uh, these uh, fields as appear on the slide, uh, digital culture and communication. This is not, uh, this is a new field of study in the humanities, uh, focusing how the digital world affects culture. It's not a classic uh, media style degree where you learn how to uh, uh, write a newspaper column or produce a radio show. It's much more about culture, the culture of today and the culture of tomorrow. Uh, uh, we have a strong uh, department in, uh, in Jewish and Israel studies. Uh, we have a, uh, a track of Middle Eastern studies, which I teach in. We have a psychology track, philosophy, of course, literature. And uh, as uh, entering this uh, coming year, we have a new track in life sciences, uh, biology and chemistry, and I uh, want an additional track, which is just getting underway now uh, in the coming semester, an exciting track, entrepreneurship and innovation, which will help us uh, tap into the Israeli culture of, of, of innovation. Um, we pride ourselves in small classes. We pride ourselves in being a small unit at a big university, which provides personal, personal attention, personal service, helps the student construct their particular program uh, uh, on in, a very individualized basis. And one needs that because everybody's program is, is different. Uh, and we can move to the next slide, Sean, thank you. Um, the first year, actually, the students are all required to take a number of course, uh, courses which we, in what we call our core curriculum. Uh, these are uh, uh, broad thematic courses in a variety of fields which are designed to provide the foundation for one's studies uh, going forward. Um, the courses vary from year to year a bit, but they really are a, uh, and they really do touch on uh, a whole number of, of, of disciplines in philosophy, from critical theory, history, literature, issues about modernity and culture, etc. Um, and uh, in addition, during those first, uh, during their first year, students will start taking courses in their uh, selected tracks. Now, what does that mean? Out of the eight tracks that we offer, students really uh, study in four of those tracks. And uh, 
one of the tracks will be a major. So if, if a student is really interested in, in psychology, they will take a, a certain number of credits, uh, really uh, uh, just under uh, approximately 30% of their credits will be in psychology. Then they will also have to, to during their time here, they will um, study, they will have a minor track and that's 24 credits. And then they take two additional uh, basic tracks, that is to say um, 18 credits in each. And altogether, uh, it uh, comes out to be uh, 120 credits. In their third year, they complete their, uh, their studies and, and are required to uh, take seminars in both their major and minor fields. And those are uh, more research papers and working in very small classes with professors. And uh, they conclude, uh, hopefully in their three years up here, that with a, a BA in the multidisciplinary program um, in the humanities. Now, starting uh, next year, with next slide, and starting next year, we are, uh, this, that is to say this fall, in fact, we are inaugurating a, 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 pick, a companion dual degree program with the Columbia School of Gen Columbia University School of General Studies. Uh, a, a Columbia University is unique in the world in having uh, joint degree programs, full joint degree programs with international institutions. They have, a, a, uh, they have pioneered in this area, and they have they were they're very excited uh, to partner with us uh, starting next year. Now, what does this mean? It means that the students will study two years in Tel Aviv and then two years in Colombia. Uh, it's a separate admissions process uh, to get into the program, but while the students are here, they will be integral parts of our existing program that I which I just described, the, the BA in the Liberal Arts program. Um, and in, after completing two thirds of their studies here, they will then go on and spend two more years in, at, in New York at Columbia University and uh, studying in their chosen fields, a whole, uh, with, of course, uh, with different uh, additional fields, uh, 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 course studies, uh, 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 course offerings that Columbia, uh, that, that Columbia offers as, as appears here, it can range from computer science to economics to creative writing, et cetera. Uh, and in the end uh, uh, of the four years, they receive two degrees, one from Columbia and one, uh, and one from uh, um, uh, Tel Aviv uh, University. Uh, that too will require uh, a lot of personal uh, consultation with advisors on both sides uh, to make sure that the students uh, are, uh, are um, achieving uh, their uh, their goals that they're uh, studying and and attaining the requisite number of credits uh, on both sides. As I said, that um, uh, that uh, program is beginning in the fall. It's a separate, there's a separate uh, application uh, for that. Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, okay, I don't have the, don't see the dates here for. The deadlines, but they're on, they're on our, our website uh, for both programs. Um, and, and just to, to head towards a conclusion, um, uh, oh, I see. So there, there is a, a general frequently asked question. Yes, the deadline is, uh, that's on the, the last slide, actually. Uh, one more. One more. OK, yes, you can see there it says that the the application deadline for our program, the, the, the three-year degree in liberal arts is July 31st. Uh, and for the, the dual degree with Columbia, the application will, will open um, in, um, in August. Um, we can go back uh, to the slide that says career opportunities after graduation. Many people, prospective students and, and, and no less uh, parents of prospective students ask us, what can we do with this degree? Uh, it doesn't give you uh, the right to practice law. You're not, it doesn't give you the right to practice medicine. Um, what does, does one do with this? And here I just refer to a quote, which we see very often among uh, uh, statements by uh, leading, leading CEOs of companies, of businesses, uh, who say over and over again in this fast changing world in which knowledge is changing and evolving and Professions are changing and skill sets are changing. They, they say over and over again, 
we, uh, the employers, can teach our can teach our workers how to program, how to do with the carry out the specific tasks that, that that are needed in this job. What we need is for you, people in the university, is to teach our is to teach the uh, prospective uh, employees how to think. And that is what we do here at Tel Aviv University uh, in our program. And uh, our uh, degree in our program opens doors uh, as we, uh, it doesn't close doors, it opens doors. Whether one is interested in going in pursuing careers in high tech or startups, uh, uh, businesses, nonprofits, uh, masters and doctoral degrees, uh, education, uh, policy making, you name it. Uh, our students have gone on uh, uh, to uh, pursue careers in all of those paths. And, and uh, hence, as I said, we are uh, uh, extremely uh, excited uh, about uh, what we do and we're ex extremely excited uh, to welcome those of you who, uh, who are interested in, uh, in studying uh, with us. Um, I think with that, we can move on. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions, of course. Oh. Oh, okay. So uh, thank you so much, Professor Mighty Weitzman. And we will now uh, move on to Professor Mark Steif, the head of the School of Electrical Engineering. So um, I'm happy to be here. And present to you. I'm here together with uh, Professor Udi Hyman, who is the uh, former Dean of Engineering and uh, currently the head of the International Studies Program. And uh, we also have uh, Yossi Shacham, who is uh, with us here. And together we will try to answer your questions and present what we have for you. So, a few words about the Faculty of Engineering in general. We have 4,200 students, 1,500 graduate students. These are good numbers and Israeli standards. I know that it's difficult to impress Indians with numbers, but, uh, but in Israeli standards, these numbers are okay. We have, we have 110 faculty members. Uh, we're well funded. Uh, our research is funded from uh, internal, meaning uh, government, Israeli government sources and external sources based on the research proposals that we have. And we have 13,000 alumni, and the most important part about, uh, about this item is that none of them is unemployed. So we have uh, 30,000 employed alumni, and we uh, hope to have many more in the future. Um, I'll say a few words. You can go on to the next slide, perhaps, Cheryl. Uh, about the departments that the Faculty of Engineering consists of. So we have uh, five departments. Uh, one is on material science and engineering, uh, biomedical engineering, electrical engineering, which is the main subject of our meeting here, and this is where our program uh, concentrates, industrial engineering and mechanical engineering. Uh, electrical engineering is about one half of our faculty, both in terms of students and in terms of um, uh, faculty members. We're about the same size as everybody, uh, all other departments together. And uh, I know that uh, actually I was surprised to find out during uh, the visits of delegations from India in previous times that uh, the term electrical engineering is not clear to Indians as it is clear to us. It means something else in India uh, relative to what it means here. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. But we use the term electrical engineering similarly to how it is used in the United States predominantly and then also in other countries in the Western world where electrical engineering is the engine or the, 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 the discipline that drives the high technologies together with computer science. It's electrical engineering and computer science that is responsible for high technologies in the world. And, uh, and there's a large number of, um, of fields that it contains that uh, would fall in other categories. Perhaps in some countries, there would be a department of communication and a department of, of, uh, of uh, information theory or control theory or artificial intelligence and so on and so forth. In Israel and 
particularly in Tel Aviv University, they all fall under the umbrella of electrical engineering. This is the name that we use for all of those things together. Uh, I, I hope that I will clarify these things uh, better as I go on. If we go on to the next slide, uh, just to give you a few ideas, some things that have been developed in our faculty, all are related to electrical engineering and was de were developed by electrical engineers. We have the high capacity flash memories that all of you carry in your pockets, have been carrying for a while now. We have uh, cell phone camera and, um, technologies, uh, fiber optic technologies is also a field that we're, we're, we're in. Um, um, signal processing and uh, applications that are designed to protect airplanes against uh, missile attacks, uh, flash memories, barcode readers, and so on and so forth. These are all in the various categories of electrical engineers, just a few examples of what uh, inventions have been developed here and promoted and have influenced the world. Uh, the next slide shows just recently we had a company by one of the, uh, can you go back one? Bit. one more? One more. Well, yes, yes. So uh, just uh, a little bit more than a year ago, a company that was um, established by one of our faculty was sold to Samsung. And again, electrical engineering, this uh, company was dealing with technologies for, for uh, cameras, uh, cell phone cameras. And uh, as I said, Samsung acquired this company at a very early stage. And there are many other companies that we've been, uh, that came out of this faculty and certainly a lot of companies that came out of, of the, of, uh, of, uh, that, were, that were founded by our alumni. Uh, a few examples concerning our research activities. Uh, these are again just a few examples. We have a lot of activities in artificial intelligence. We have a lot of things, applications that are being uh, worked on uh, in the field of Internet of Things, renewable energy and water, 3D printing, 2D materials, uh, brain machine technologies, electronic tattoos, defense technologies is a subject that is strong in, uh, in Israeli academia and industries as well, and so on and so forth. And these are just a few of the subjects that are being uh, uh, worked on in the faculty and uh, in all those subjects, we have activities specifically within the uh, Department of Electrical Engineering. What we have now is a, is a BSc program. And well, we have had a BSc, a very successful BSc program in Electrical Engineering. And uh, our, uh, as I said, our alumni are responsible for many companies that have been established and have been rated as one of the most productive university in terms of um, entrepreneurship of our uh, alumni. But the new thing about this is that uh, starting from, uh, from last year, essentially, this program is offered in English. The exact same program is offered in English. We've had a program that was offered in English and it was, uh, was separate from our, our main program, from our Hebrew program. But starting from this last year, the year that is ending now, the academic year that is ending in one month, the English program is fully integrated into the Hebrew program. And we offer everything that we have in uh, both languages. And uh, we are uh, um, uh, expanding in this way to, uh, to the international arena. So the focus that we have in electrical engineering is on a large variety of, uh, of subjects. I mentioned some previously. I know that in India, I've been told that when people hear about electrical engineering, they picture engineers climbing on electric poles and fixing things uh, on roofs and so on and so forth. This is not something that our engineers do. We have engineers that work in the uh, energy and power electronics area. Uh, the climbing on the poles is, uh, is something that is done mostly by technicians. Engineers don't do that in general, but, but we have an activity in energy. But to give you an idea, this activity in energy in terms of number of faculty in, uh, in Tel Aviv that we have working on, on the classical electrical engineering, high power applications and so on, is of the order of five to 10% of our faculty. 
The rest is doing, uh, is working on subjects uh, related to communication, to signal processing, control, computers, optics, uh, devices, uh, electromagnetism and radiation, bioelectronics and others. And uh, uh, if, if you look at your typical smartphone that you have, each one of us carries in his pocket, which uh, combines uh, a lot of innovative uh, technologies. I would say that about 85% of it is electrical engineering. It's electrical engineering and computer science. Of course, there's material science and so on and so forth, but most of the uh, technology there is related to electrical engineering and we have activities in all the fields that, that make it. The same is true for, uh, uh, for the um, uh, autonomous cars that are now being very, uh, that are now very popular in, 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 the, in, in culture anyway. So it's a, it's a very popular uh, subject. So what we're offering is a full uh, BSc in electrical engineering in English. Uh, we have a four-year program. Uh, the first two years mostly are devoted to basics. We start with mathematics and physics. We have a very, uh, our philosophy is that our students should know, should have a strong basis, solid basis in, uh, in mathematics and physics. Uh, then we proceed with, with fundamental subjects in electrical engineering. And then during the third and fourth year, the idea is that most students elect what they want to study. So we give them the foundations and then each student decides in what subjects he wants to specialize. Some want to specialize in, in machine learning, others may want to specialize in uh, electromagnetics or in optics and so on and so forth. And students get to choose what it is that they want to specialize in. Usually they specialize in two to three subjects and uh, most of their courses in the third and fourth years are electives. There's also a project that they do, and, uh, and this project uh, is meant to uh, help them uh, acquire some practical experience and design something, and they do it, uh, the, the projects are accompanied by uh, qualified engineers. And uh, this is, uh, again, one of the requirements that they complete their projects during their studies. Uh, the next slide contains uh, a detailed description of, uh, of the program. I'm not going to go over those courses, but this will give you, there, also, there, there, will, there uh, have also been some changes that will take effect next year, minor changes, but, but, but to get an idea of what's going on and what we're studying, um, it is uh, perhaps useful to, to, to look at this. I, I, I think that this presentation will be available in some form. Yeah. So this information is on the web page and uh, one, can, uh, one can find out what it is that we're teaching by looking uh, at these uh, courses here. Why study electrical engineering in Tel Aviv University in English? These are small classes that combine Israeli and international students. Unlike previous years, having gone through previous years and having uh, understood the the situation better, we are going to invest special efforts to attract Israeli, local Israeli students to join the internationals and uh, present a class that combines Israelis and internationals together to study together. This is, I think that this is beneficial also for the Israeli students culturally and academically. And uh, this is something that we're putting a lot of emphasis for next year, for this coming year. Uh, there's an opportunity to start internship uh, starting from the second year with uh, professors, not only from electrical engineering, by the way, from the entire engi engineering faculty. We encourage students to work with professors and to improve their skills and to uh, deepen their understanding of the various subjects. Um, we're located in the startup nation. We're famous for our entrepreneurship uh, and for our education that, that encourages entrepreneurship. And uh, I think that for all those reasons, uh, perhaps uh, we are an attractive choice, at least uh, uh, as far as I can see it. Some practical information appears on the next page, and here my colleagues will help me with the details. Uh, you have an application fee, there is a tuition. The tuition, I should, I should perhaps uh, clarify that uh, Tuition 
in Israel, in Tel Aviv University, is approximately $15,000 per student. Most of it is subsidized by the government, by the Israeli government. And so we end up with something that is $4,550 per student. We have been successful in the previous year to reduce that by further scholarships for uh, Indian students who are going to try and, uh, and find ways to uh, find scholarships, hopefully also for the future, to reduce the costs for Indian students. Uh, in general, the tuition that we present for the general public, international public, is uh, represented by this number, $4,550 uh, uh, $4, per year. This, uh, on top of this, we have dormitories for $600 per month, and, uh, and uh, the rest is, um, is uh, usual. The admission criteria for, criteria for India are also listed on this slide. Uh, we require original 10th wards, uh, we require, and then we require G mains and a 12th wards, and uh, the required G mains depends on the 12th wards, and vice versa, so students that have a minimum of 75 in the 12th wards are required to be in the top 40,000 and 40,000 in the G main. And uh, students that are below that in the G main are required to have higher, higher grades in the 12th wards. This is in order for us to consider uh, the admission. Uh, uh, there's also uh, possibility of using aptitude tests like SAT and so on, along with uh, high grades in math and physics um, uh, in the 12th boards. Uh, our contact information is also included in this, uh, in this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, we have administrative contacts and uh, Professor Hyman is the academic contact. He will be replaced by Professor Yossi Shacham starting from the next academic year, and his, uh, Yossi Shacham's uh, contact information will appear on the same website uh, in the future. Um, a few words, perhaps, on, um, on things that happen beyond the uh, BSc degree that we offer. We are also very active in recruiting international graduate students and postdocs. We have a lot of uh, internationals, also from India, we have people from India who come here for their masters and PhD degrees. And people who will come out of our program, people who will graduate from the BSc program will have the possibility of continuing here with a scholarship and do their graduate studies here. Um, we have collaborations with companies worldwide in various countries, and we, we, we are trying and we will continue trying to uh, introduce our students to those companies for internships and for, for employment. Uh, we also have uh, a strategic three plus two programs, which means three years of undergraduate studies plus two years of graduate studies uh, with engineering universities worldwide, including uh, India. I guess that this is the end of the presentation, so we're now open to uh, answer your question. Yes, and uh, thank you so much, Professor Steig. Thank you for this uh, presentation. Before we get to your questions, uh, and we will in a second, I would just like to see whether Shreya Shankar is still with us. Yeah, hi. Yes. Hi, thank you for waiting. Uh, would you be willing to say a few words from the student's perspective on Tel Aviv University? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Shreya Shankar. I'm in my third year uh, of electronic engineering at TNU. Um, I'm originally from Bangalore, India. Um, and um, um, let me just say uh, what I like about TNU. So I think one of the best things is like the quality of education that we get. Um, like Professor Mark said, there's a heavy emphasis on things like math and physics which is really important for a couple of reasons. One, the quote tough courses that we do like in our third and fourth year become easier. And the second thing is people who want to pursue uh, projects in say artificial intelligence or machine learning, or uh, if you want to uh, do like interdisciplinary projects, having this kind of 
uh, strong fundamentals is really, really useful. Um, and all the credit would definitely go to our faculty. Um, they have an expertise in academia and industry, and that really helps. And it also inspires us and gives us a window to see how it would be if we pursue research or if we got into the industry after our education. Um, the second thing about TAU would be uh, the cultural exposure that you get. So I joined TAU when I was 18, and it was very different. I got to live in an entirely different country. I do live in an entirely different country. And you learn to do things uh, on your own. So you become independent. Um, you meet so many people from so many different countries. You study with them, you learn with them, and you just uh, form like this close-knit community. Uh, uh, with the social counselors, we get to explore Israel, um, learn about the holidays there, um, the culture, the language. So I think um, it's an excellent, excellent combination of uh, getting a strong academic foundation for your bachelors, um, meaning you have the freedom to choose what you want to do next and know that you are going to be a great engineer, be creative and innovative. Um, that's what TAU encourages. And um, also we get this um, sort of exposure that I don't think I've gotten anywhere else. We get to attend, we get to participate in research with our professors, be it over the summer as a final year project, or masters, like continue after doing, doing your bachelor's. Um, so I think that way, uh, the academic foundation is really strong at TAU. And as I mentioned, culturally, you have such a great experience there. You uh, form bonds with people. You learn so much about different countries and cultures and things like that. Uh, yeah, so, so far, I think my experience at EU has been amazing. I definitely made the right choice. Uh, so if you're looking for things like this, I would highly recommend uh, you think about this uh, opportunity and join EU. Thank you, Shreds. Thank you so much. Um, I know that the sound quality wasn't perfect, but this is a good opportunity for me to mention that this uh, presentation, its entirety, um, as well as the slides, will be sent to each of you individually and all the places that you had to miss because of technical difficulties um, will be available to you um, later on um, um, through this uh, video that we will send. Um, I think we have a lot of questions waiting for us, so maybe this would be a good time to turn to um, the Q&A. So the first question is, is there any artificial intelligence course for BTEC or BSc? Or is there an art AI course for the BSc program? Yes, uh, we have, okay, so we have, uh, currently we have, a large introductory course for BSc for uh, for uh, uh, AI. It's called uh, Introduction to Statistical Machine Learning, and it is given to uh, mostly fourth year students. The thing with AI is that uh, uh, names aside, uh, truly working on AI requires some background. So uh, you cannot have a second year course and call it call it AI. You you may call it AI, but uh, but you have to be teaching basic things there, uh, the fundamentals that will only later become the AI. And so to teach AI, you need to have a certain background. So the first two and a half years, actually, or three years are background for AI. And then we have a course that is given for fourth year students. In uh, following years, I believe that we will have another course that will be dedicated to neural nets. Currently, we have one course and we have additional courses on AI, a large number of them, that are available to BSc students in fourth year, but they are formally master's courses. So these are master's courses that uh, successful students, students who are interested in this field, can take even when they are uh, undergraduates. Okay, the next question is about the SAT. So SAT for the application processes. Yeah, well, uh, Tarmir University and the EE program, uh, if you don't have the G main, you can apply through the SAT route, and the requirement is uh, 670 uh, in uh, the math, 
uh, grade in the math part and around the uh, 13 uh, uh, hundreds in the com uh, combined uh, grade. Okay. Um, Liberal arts. Oh, Bruce, yeah. there's a question. Uh, liberal arts? Yes, uh, yeah, I want to emphasize that our admissions process is holistic. We, we really uh, try to look at everything uh, that the student uh, is going to bring to the table. And th therefore, they have to write personal essays. Uh, we look, at, of course, at their academic record. And uh, we expect that uh, their, for the uh, liberal arts program, we expect a minimum of 1,100 on the SATs or, or or an ACT, which I, I think our minimum net is is, uh, is 20. Um, yeah, the, the uh, dual degree program with Columbia, the, the requirements are, are higher, than, are actually higher. Than that. Okay, and while we have, is sure. Israeli history a mandatory subject? Yeah, there is an introductory course, uh, uh, one of our core courses on Israeli society and politics uh, that, and, and as a core course, that means everyone, uh, Everyone has to take that. We really do believe that our uh, that our students should uh, be introduced to the local culture and the history of of the country that they're living in. Beyond that, uh, we have, as I said, we have eight tracks of study, and uh, one of them is Israel and Jewish studies. You you're only required to take four tracks, which means that you, you certainly don't have to take anything. Uh, any, anything in that okay. for engineering uh, is uh, does computer science also come under electrical engineering so uh, there's it's another question on AI mm -hmm. and computer yeah. science so no. Just, no I mean we have Tel Aviv University has a computer science department there's a school for computer science which is separate from the from the faculty of from the faculty of engineering from the school of electrical engineering uh, there's a lot of in common between the two schools so we have uh, professors from there uh, guide our students for masters and PhDs and vice versa. We have our professors uh, supervise students from uh, computer science for, for gra and graduate studies for masters and PhDs. We have uh, uh, joint uh, courses. We have uh, certain, uh, a large overlap in certain areas, but these are separate programs. In the end, these are separate programs. There is a there is a there is a dual program that teaches both subjects, but that program is only in Hebrew; it does not exist. In and there's a question about like coding. Yeah. Is there coding in the degree? Do the students do coding work? Yeah, they do coding work. Yes. But let me add about the computer science part. Um, we both uh, approach computer or computer technology or computer engineering, but from different areas. Our student approach the computer engineering part from the uh, system approach. So they have to understand the electrical engineering and the communication and the signal processing thing and these things. And eventually they do, which is part of the computer world. The computer science people approach the computers from the mathematical point of view mainly. So, but we are, as Professor Stein said at the beginning, we are both participating in the high-tech uh, world. Okay, um, there's, a there's a couple of questions about acceptance criteria. So, uh, is an IB diploma a requirement is one question. And in general, the application process. Um, on application uh, and just IB. So, if we can just do those questions. IB. IB is a, uh, one of the tracks that uh, a student can uh, be accepted. Everything is written on our webpage. Whether you have, you studied the IB uh, track or you studied the uh, uh, Indian track, uh, the JMA, the GMA, all these are uh, specified. Okay. Um, Sorry, the GPA. You want to There's a question about the GPA for uh, the Columbia track. Yeah, uh, the, the Columbia, the, the dual degree program uh, has, uh, uh, expects uh, the applicants to have, a, let's say, a minimum 3.5 uh, average uh, out of 4.0 and SAT around uh, 1250 combined in order to be considered. That 
there's a second stage of that application process which uh, require which in which students who make it through the first cut will then be interviewed um, uh, by uh, uh, our admissions team uh, both uh, Columbia and Tel Aviv people will be uh, in, in participating in that interview usually it's a, a presumably a remote interview in, in, in for students who can't make it into the place so physically. Uh, I would also say that, that in terms of our liberal arts uh, program students, uh, Indian students who have the 10th and 12th boards don't have to take the SATs or SATs or ACTs. Okay, um, we've got a couple of questions about scholarships, just in general. So the scholarship policy, full scholarship, part, partial scholarships, you can just address the different avenues for scholarships. Well, there are several scholarship options. Some of them are general for the international school, meaning that uh, students who apply to any international program um, are eligible to apply to these scholarships. And in addition to that, there are scholarships within each program. So maybe Professor Maddie Weitzman can say a few words about the liberal arts uh, scholarships and then um, you could uh, explain a little bit more about the, the uh, scholarships that you offer. Yeah, for, for, for our programs, um, uh, we have a limited number of, of, one, of partial scholarships, which could be, our full tuition is $12,500 per year. Uh, we have a limited number of scholarships, uh, which, uh, are, uh, which would cover either a quarter or a half of that tuition. Um, uh, the uh, dual degree program for the years in Columbia, they have their also have uh, their financial aid uh, packages, which uh, run to, I think, uh, something like 40 or 50% of the total fee uh, uh, that they take, which is considerably higher than what, than what the legal is. Okay. There's a question about JE Main uh, Paper 1. This is in JE Main's of acceptance. And then there's another question about doing a mine in liberal arts while doing engineering. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't get the question. The J main, just J main yes. criteria, how are you dealing with J main and the, for the acceptance? Yes, I think so in general, just let's right, speak a few minutes right. on acceptance for EE. Yes, yeah, so I, 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 I had a slide on it, and uh, the slide again will be available. To okay. You. Uh, roughly, what we have people whose uh, who's, uh, 12th board is, uh, is high enough. I think it was 85 and above 85 and uh, have good grades in math and physics. Uh, the, the G main that is required from them is, I believe, within the 100,000 number. People who are, uh, who are, uh, 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 who have a G main of top 40,000, uh, they can be admitted with a, with a, 12 boards of 75, of, of a minimum of 75. So those who have 75, they require, they are required to be in the top 40,000 in G main. Those who are uh, uh, below, uh, who are um, better than 85, they need to be in the top 100,000. Oh yes, I have a okay. So there was a question about vegetarian food on campus and just safety in the COVID time. There was also the question about doing studying in both. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Please, yeah, but, but that's that's currently not an option to, to do right. a dual degree in both these programs. Unfortunately, although it's a wonderful idea. Um, just one more word about scholarships. I do want to mention that at the moment we are offering additional scholarships because of the COVID-19 situation. So we realize that several of our applicants are facing hardships at this time and therefore we allocated more funds for scholarships for students who apply to our program for uh, next year. Uh, about vegetarians, so first of all, let me say that Tel Aviv, the, Tel Aviv, the city of Tel Aviv has uh, won numerous uh, awards and recognitions for being the capital of uh, vegan eating uh, of the world. So uh, there, are, there's a lot of, there are a lot of uh, vegan and vegetarians uh, among Israelis and a lot of uh, uh, restaurants and food stores that cater to this population. Um, and that includes also our campus. Our campus has several uh, options for uh, vegetarian uh, dining. Let me just mention that uh, unlike uh, say an American university where students uh, 
included in their package, in their dorm package, is also uh, campus dining. Uh, Tel Aviv University doesn't work that way. A lot of our students um, who stay in the dorms actually provide for their own um, meals and they are, you know, the, the dorm rooms are equipped with sort of basic kitchen facilities and students usually uh, end up uh, cooking for themselves or for each other. Um, having said that, again, Tel Aviv University as well as Tel Aviv as a whole has very many options for dining out uh, if you are a vegetarian. Okay. Um... There was a question about robotics, whether you have robotics uh, as a specialization. Well, robotics uh, as, a, as a title, we don't have robotics as a title, but we have what, what makes robotics work. Uh, so robotics is a combination of control theory, uh, signal processing, and uh, mostly these things. And uh, certainly we have multiple courses on this, these subjects. And uh, those who want to work on robotics or on robots, they eventually need to, 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 to specialize in, those area, in these areas. And of course, for graduate studies, there are more courses that are more specific to, uh, to robotics. And we have um, a faculty, actually, not only in the electrical engineering department, but in, in other departments as well, who specialize in robotics. and. Uh, these are possibilities for internships and, uh, and, um, and various uh, other paths for people to educate themselves on these subjects. Okay. Um, about COVID, do we address the issues of COVID and uh, sort of how we cope with COVID on campus? Well, at the moment, um, as I think I've mentioned in, um, uh, earlier, uh, things are pretty much back to normal. We are allowed in principle to hold classes physically on campus, provided they are of a certain size. So we don't, we're not allowed to hold classes that are, you know, that have 300 people in them, but smaller groups and labs and such, uh, we are uh, currently allowed to uh, hold. And indeed, the summer semester, which begins very uh, shortly, um, programs in the summer semester are planning to, uh, to hold their classes as they would have uh, before uh, COVID. Of course, there are various safety measures that the university is very strict about. You know, we, we, our temperature is taken when we enter campus in the morning. Uh, we walk around on campus wearing masks. Uh, we don't take any chances. Uh, even though the situation in Israel is now looking relatively well uh, in terms of the numbers of the people who are inflicted with this virus, uh, we don't want to take chances and we're very careful to um, make sure that we follow the guidelines as they are issued by the Israeli government. For engineering, there's questions about um, automotive engineering and astrono astronomical engineering. I'm not sure. Astronomy, I'm assuming. Yeah, so, well, we don't have uh, astronomy. This is not part of our curriculum. We don't study courses in that uh, area at all. As to automotive, um, once again, the aspects of uh, of uh, many aspects of uh, of, of uh, the autonomous vehicles have to do with control and with artificial intelligence or machine learning. And we do have courses and projects in both those studies. We have a project, a faculty project, where there's an autonomous car that is being designed. This is not a course. This is a project that people can participate in. We don't have a course with this title, but we certainly do things that are necessary in order to, to, um, to work in that industry. Okay. Um, there have been a lot of questions about acceptance criteria. We will send a mail outlining acceptance, SATs, etc., etc., And on scholarships as well. Um, we do have, maybe just on scholarships, we just categorically address need and merit-based scholarships for the different programs. Right. Just. Scholarships, just to scholarships. People okay. ask me how it works. Well, uh, the, I mean, the tuition is $4,550, as I said earlier. We were able to reduce that uh, price by scholarships for the coming year, for, for the 2020-2021 uh, academic year that is going to start in October. Uh, we will try to do it for the following year. We cannot 
guarantee that we will be able to do that. Uh, there's there's no uh, not much more that I can say about it. There are some merit uh, scholarships that are like awards, but uh, there's not much beyond that. Okay, a few people have asked about the full cost. So living, kind of just a guesstimate of the full expenses for the two respective degrees. And that would be an excellent question for Shreya, actually. I don't know if she's still on Shreya, the call. are you still on the call? Yes. So, I mean, grosso modo, 60,000 for E, including everything? 60,000 for the four years. Yeah, right. Shreya. Oh, okay. Shreya. There was a question about the, the, the cost. The, what's the full cost of the degree on average? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we can't. Shreya, can you hear us? Yeah, now I can. There, there were questions about the cost of living, the full cost of, 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 mm -hmm. of campus. So just the, the full okay. cost of, of the degree and everything. Um, okay, so. Uh, my tuition is $4,500. That is the old thing, but now I believe it's 4500 And uh, I have a scholarship, so that's taken care of. Plus, we have $600 for the dorms every month. Uh, and we stay there for 10 months or a little longer if you're planning to stay over the summer and work on projects. Um, apart from that, I think it comes to around um, 300 to $500 per month. Uh, would be basic expenses on like food and transportation, things you need. Uh, plus, maybe you'll have to make, like, of course, there are flight tickets and maybe one time investments that you will need for your four years um, living it out. There's also an option of not staying on the dorms. Um, and you'd be paying around, say, I believe 2,000 shekels uh, a month for um, housing. So that's another option if you're not doing so because we, we couldn't hear you very well, Shreya, because we're not hearing you very well, maybe I'll just repeat some of what you said and you just nod your head if that's correct. So uh, $600 a month. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Around between three to $400 other living expenses, including uh, food and other uh, kind of daily expenses. The tuition is- Yeah, that would be the basic, like the minimum. The minimum. Uh, Mark minimum. mentioned- of uh, forty five hundred uh, um, dollars, and uh, you also mentioned the fact that there is a possibility not to live in the dorms, uh, but to rent an apartment, you know, with friends or on your own in Tel Aviv. And I think that, at least from my perspective, uh, if you're uh, cohabiting in a rented apartment in Tel Aviv, you can probably pay something similar to what you would be paying in the dorms uh, for that, or maybe a little more. Yeah, yeah, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. Bruce, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's not okay. So mm -hmm. I think that though, I'd say engineering grosser mode of the four years, sixty thousand US dollars, including travel, accommodation, food expenses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um, there's a in terms of applications, we will send a mail with application process and guidelines. There's a question about. Um, uh, after completing engineering, we get the BE, Bachelor of Engineering, or is the BSc the same? What's, again, are you touching it, but just to clarify what degree they get and... Uh, what degree they get yeah. in electrical yeah. engineering. Yeah. They, 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 what, we, what we give is a, is a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. This is exact, the exact same degree that Israeli students have been receiving for the past, uh, how many years, I don't remember how many years we exist. And uh, it is called uh, a BSc in Electrical Engineering. Uh, yeah, well, that's, okay. that's what it says now. No. So th there's a question on uh, entertainment and sports facilities. We, we do have a cricket side, but it's not a big thing in the job. But maybe Milet just on entertainment and sort of the sports life on campus. Yes, yeah, so, you know, as, um, as uh, again, you would have been able to see, had you seen the video, that Tel Aviv is a very dynamic city uh, with a lot of culture. Uh, a lot of things going on all the time. It's nicknamed the nonstop city. Uh, it's, it's alive 24 hours a day and, and buzzing with activities. Uh, on campus, uh, we have a very large uh, sports complex um, that you are uh, able, if you would like, to uh, become a member of. In the dorms, we also have a uh, fitness room uh, and fitness um, 
trainers. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as I said, uh, the, there are endless possibilities in Tel Aviv. Whatever is your choice of entertainment, uh, you'd be able to find it here. Indian food well. Even Indian food, Professor Steiff reminds me, and that's true. Not as good as Indian food in India, but nevertheless, it's, uh, there is some. Okay. Um, data analytics we've spoken about. Um, 100% are there, is a possibility for 100 full scholarship, 100% scholarship. We don't have this possibility right now. I don't know if we're going to be able to. If we if we will have it, I cannot uh, comment. Okay, important question: When does the academic year begin? The academic year uh, this coming year will begin on October 18th. Um, we usually begin right after the Jewish holidays, which tend to end uh, any time from uh, the beginning to the end of October. So for 2021, uh, the beginning date uh, falls on October 18th. So okay. there's still plenty of time. Um, just a question, uh, the marks for the 11th standard for engineering and uh, when after J.E. Mains can they apply? Sorry? Uh, 11th standard for engineering. What are the 11th standard marks you're looking at for acceptance for engineering? When, you, when you're reviewing a candidate? We are reviewing him based on uh, his 12 boards with emphasis on math and physics. And uh, I am not, I'm not sure that I'm able to give more detail. Unfortunately, Professor Hyman has had to leave. Okay, I'm make, I don't know if I can be heard, but there's a, a lady called Maitili Zuk Jok on the yes. call. Maitili is in Pune. Her son has studied here, and if anyone's interested, we can connect you and you can speak to her in Marathi and Hindi about sort of some of these issues. So I think uh, Maitili, who's on the call, um, can deal with a lot of these questions. Um, Just wrote in the chat. Um, I think just wrote in the chat. Uh, okay. Um, extracurricular activities we've discussed. Um, quantum, any quantum related uh, stuff in engineering? Oh, yes. Yes. We yes. have uh, okay. uh, all students are required to take a course in quantum mechanics, at least one course in quantum mechanics, and then many of the technologies rely on some knowledge of quantum mechanics. And uh, we are going to introduce new courses in quantum mechanics in the coming few years. There's been a plan for that. There been professors who are interested in giving this, those courses. There's also funding for quantum related re research. Now there's intensive funding. And I'm sure that we will have more courses as we go on. Uh, quantum science uh, integrates very well into what we're doing. So there's a question about, um, the visa application process, and we're very lucky to have our diplomats on the line, but uh, visa application processes. Um, currently, we are waiting for um, the various ministries involved in managing the COVID-19 crisis to give us the green light that would allow for students to apply for student visas at whatever is their local embassy or consulate. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Students who already um, are students at Tel Aviv University have no problem at the moment coming back to Israel, but new students would require, um, of course, a student visa. And we're hoping that within the next weeks, uh, hopefully two to three weeks or so, we would have a more definite answer as to when exactly would the embassies and consulate services be issuing student visas again. Okay, but there is a visa process and our, our diplomatic missions in Delhi, we have a consulate in Mumbai and a consulate in Bangalore are extremely helpful as are the embassy here. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, there was a question about the size of campus and the dorms and security. So just about. Yes, it's very important for me again to emphasize that safety and well-being and security are a top priority for us. All our dorms are in an enclosed area with 24-hour um, um, uh, security services so that nobody can come uh, into the dorms unless they are residents of the dorms. Um, 
Tel Aviv, uh, in general, um, I should say, is a very safe city. It might not seem that way from uh, reportings on the news about the Middle East, but um, generally speaking, Tel Aviv is the kind of city where I, for example, feel completely safe walking around at night with no worries uh, whatsoever. Um, so Tel Aviv, in general, doesn't pose a security issue for students. But having said that, it's also important to emphasize that the university takes a lot of precautions to make sure that the dorms are secured and managed and uh, maintained in, in, a, you know, in an orderly way and that students feel absolutely safe uh, staying there. Just on scholarships, I mean, there are a lot of questions from scholarships. Again, once you apply and we think the students are worthy candidates, we'll, I mean, it's, it's, there's no hard and fast rules. It's, it's a, it's a, once you get into the process, you deal with scholarships. Yes, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I should say that at the moment, if you begin an application process in the next few weeks, you will see as part of the application process on our website for the international programs, the opportunity to apply as you apply for the program for the COVID-19 special scholarship. Uh, and those students who will be accepted into the program uh, if they are, um, you know, strong candidates are likely to also get some support in terms of tuition for next year under the COVID-19 scholarship fund. There's a question about mechatronics or mechatron. Is there a mechatron or similar course in engineering? Well, the truth is that uh, no, there, there's no course in mechatronics. We have a, depart a department of mechanical engineering with whom we are in a very good relationship, but uh, we don't have a course in electrical engineering on mechatronics. Okay, and then the question, if someone, I mean, there is an AI track in the, in the EU degree, right? Or AI is integrated into a number of tracks. Okay. The track is not called AI, but it is a main theme as in, in a number of tracks. Okay, automotive engineering, we've spoken about. Yes. Um, okay, I think, uh, Okay, how many patents are being filed from the University of Rio? Uh, oh, I don't have the numbers. It's gone. I don't have okay, uh, does liberal arts, Bruce, include a study of Western literature in depth? Do we study Western literature? Western literature. If one wants to, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, the literature track at our university is actually Professor Shamir's. Uh, uh, department, uh, the, the, there is a very strong literature department in the university and our students in the track are studying with Israeli students uh, in those courses. They're all, all the courses are in English and it's a very, very strong, a very, very strong uh, uh, program. Yes. Okay, I think uh, pretty much covered most of the questions. Um, Great, but of course we are available, all of us, to answer more of your questions on email and you'll be able to find our information in the links that you will receive uh, shortly um, and also, as I mentioned before this presentation. And I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us and for giving us the opportunity to tell you a little bit about ourselves here at Tel Aviv University. Um, Please feel free again to contact us with uh, with any other requests or questions. And I'm wishing you all a very good uh, evening, and hoping to hear from you again. And Gary, what, what's what, what, one, what, one comment: a few people have suggested we give you the price in rupees, and we'll make it in lakhs and crores, and we'll get back to you. So we, we appreciate that. For not everyone, dollars is the benchmark. But it's it's lakhs and crores and rupees. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do that as well. Um, okay. Think, okay, uh, thank you, Gary. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Professor Maddy Weitzman and Professor Steif. And, and uh, have a good evening. And Maytili is the go-to person who will, ha will answer any questions. Thank you very much. And maintain social distance. Namaste, <laughs> namaskar. Okay,